to sing in the valley, to look toward your goodness. My heart set on who you are. You're the light that consumes the dark. The joy and the strength to lift up my hands and sing. Nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart to want you first, all for your glory. My feet on the song is my triumph. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. My soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. My soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth, I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first. All for your glory, I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth, I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I'll bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory.
you're still moving here today. The liberator is in the house. The sound of healing is breaking out. Step into the freedom. Step into the freedom we found. The God of heaven is speaking now. His word is tearing our strongholds out. Step into the freedom. Step into the freedom we found. There's a stirring in the wells, and our hearts are overwhelmed. Let revival come as the shaking of the dust. Oh, you are good, you do not change. setting us free we thank you for being the same God yesterday today and forever and that will never change God we step in faith this morning and we want you to move we want you to move God Jesus we open our hearts to you just have your way God because we believe for This mountain can't be moved. They say this change will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there. 
believe that he can provide miracles this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you today, God. We glorify you in your, in your presence, Lord Jesus. We honor you today. We thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you that you do everything that you say you're going to do, Lord Jesus. That you are everything that you say that you are, Lord Jesus. In you there is no lying. There is no shadow of turning. You are who you are, who you've always been, who you're always going to be, God. And we worship you and we praise you, Lord, that you are steadfast, Lord, and that you are true and that you are faithful, God. And we honor you today. We worship you today, Lord God. Thank you for your presence in this place, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your presence in this house today, God. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said it. He said it. And he says, it's as good as done. I think sometimes we just need to listen to what he says. You know, we're not going to find our answers by listening to what Fox News or CNN or NBC says. We're not going to find what we're looking for by scrolling through a news feed or by binge watching a show. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Listen to me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly of heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He said it. And we believe it this morning. Amen. Even if by faith. Even if you can't even see it, even if it doesn't look any remotely possible, God said it, that you'll be the first and not the last, the head, not the tail, that you will never be forgotten or forsaken. He sticks closer than a brother. So whatever it is you're walking through this morning, whatever it is that you're facing today, I want you to know that you're not facing it alone that he's with you and that he's going to do whatever he says he's going to do and nothing short, nothing short. So if you're here, you're watching online and you just have a need that you want us to agree with you about in prayer this morning, will you just slip up your hand? We're just going to pray today and we're going to believe in God. We're going to believe, we're going to trust in what he says and we're going to just, we're just going to hold on to it. So let's pray. Let's pray, church. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus this morning, Lord, and we just thank you. We thank you that you're faithful. We thank you that you never lie. We're thankful that you don't waste words, Lord Jesus, that that you don't say things just to say them, but Lord, you plan on doing everything that you say you're going to do. So we cling to your promises this morning. We, we listen to your promises today, and we don't listen to the voices of the world. We don't listen to the voices of the enemy. We don't listen to our voices that doubt and fear and tremble, Lord. We listen to your voice, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we speak your truth over every single situation, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are faithful, Lord, so we just surrender every need to you today, God. We surrender every person that needs to be healed to you today, God. Lord, we surrender every broken marriage to you today, God. Lord, we just give that to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give every financial crisis to you, Lord Jesus. We surrender to you. We put it in your hands, Lord God. Whatever it is, whatever the need is, the the, the mental health, Lord Jesus, the, the person who's walking through a dark valley 
today. We surrender them to you today, God. And we just know, God, that you are going to show up in your own mighty way. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you show up in our darkest moments and you are a comfort to those who are brokenhearted, Lord. You are, you are a rescuer for those that are hurting. You are close to us when we're at our lowest. And so we thank you today and we receive that promise today, God. And we just submit and surrender everything to you. We just pray your will be done in every single situation. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. How many of you are thankful that we serve a God that we can believe everything that he says? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us here at River Life this morning. Whether you're here or you're watching online, just take a moment, look around, send somebody a wave, tell them you're glad to see them here at River Life, that they look good this morning. Show them a little love, and once you do that, you can be seated. If this is your first Sunday here, or you, maybe you've been here a couple weeks and you haven't yet done so, there is a, a card in the seat back pocket in front of you. It's called a connection card. And if you just take a moment and you fill that out, we'd love to get to know you better, but um, this is our commitment to you. If you take that card, you fill it out. After service, you can take it out there to Connect Central in, the, in there in the lobby under Reach, where it says Reach, Learn, Connect. If you fill out that card, they're going to give you a gift just to let you know how thankful we are that you joined us today. But our commitment to you is that we're going to pray for you this week. Every single week, our leadership team gets together. We pray over every single card. And uh, we would love to pray for you this week. So if you'll take a moment and do that, make sure you drop it by Connect Central out in the lobby. But we got a lot of great things coming up here at River Life Church. We're so glad you all are here today. You braved the winter storm out there. You made it. <laughs> That'll be the highlight talk topic of today is, is the Florida weather. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. But we got a lot of great things coming up at River Life. We just want you to take a look. Good morning, River Life family. We're so glad you're here with us for service today in the house and online. We hope you're having a great day. Here's a look at what's coming up at River Life Church. Our Wednesday night prayer services concluded this past Wednesday night. Now our spring semester of equipped classes and groups are ready to begin this Wednesday night, February 2nd. To see a list of the classes and groups offered, you can pick up a catalog at the table in the lobby. There are sign-up sheets at the table as well. The list of class and group offerings can also be viewed through our mobile app and website. You can sign up there as well. We're excited for another great semester of learning together and connecting through our equipped classes and groups. If you are new here to River Life, we invite you to join our next Connect Track on Sunday, February 6th. You'll learn more about the church, God's design and gifts for you, and how you can be involved here. There's a sign-up sheet at Connect Central, or you can register on our mobile app. Just go to the Next Steps tab. As always, we want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. There are five ways to give. You can give securely online through our church website, riverlife.church, or our mobile app. You can give through our Text to Give service by texting the number on the screen. You can mail your offering to our address here, 1012 57th Street East, or your giving can be placed in one of the offering containers at the back of the sanctuary. Thank you for all you do to make ministry happen here at River Life. Again, thank you for your commitment and kingdom support and ministry. Great things are happening and will happen. Excited about the year ahead. Well, we're excited about our groups and classes launching with our equipped semester this coming week. And uh, we are expecting great things from the Lord. We had a great time of prayer. Our prayer services were powerful. And we're looking forward to these classes coming up. We have a, a great host of classes that you can choose from. So be sure and check those out on the mobile app, website, or go to the table in the lobby if you're here. And you can sign up classes there. You can sign up on the mobile app. You can sign up online. 
So be sure and sign up. Let us know you're planning to come. If, if something happens and you forget to sign up, still show up, okay? Don't say, well, I forgot to sign up. I won't make it. Uh, so uh, we want you to show up even if you get to sign up. But I want, I want to do this this morning. I want to just take a moment. We want to pray that the Lord would bless this upcoming semester and uh, the classes, the discipleship, uh, the, the, the time invested in those that are going to be leading that. We want to pray over them today. So I'm going to ask everybody that's leading a class or a small group for our Wednesday nights or a small group, maybe it's uh, off-site or different time, and then Wednesdays, would you would y'all just come join me right up here up front? You can just stand right up front here if you're leading a, a class or a group. Uh, all of our teams, you guys just come line up across the front. I, I want to just quickly introduce, and then and then also uh, we're going to just pray together over them and ask the Lord to anoint them and anoint this semester. So we have some of them that will be in the eleven o'clock service, uh, I'm sure. So this is our the nine o'clock crew. This is the up and going crew uh, on Wednesday. So you want to join their classes? They're go getters. They're here at nine o'clock in the morning. But uh, we just appreciate their leading the class. Of course, Greg and Marge down here lead the uh, Friday morning adult Bible studies. It's Friday mornings here at 10 o'clock at the church. You sign up or show up. Stephanie's leading a class this time on parenting here on Wednesday nights at 7. Ms. Judy Karkoff is leading our Financial Peace University class on Thursday nights at 630. So uh, if you're praying the Lord help you get everything straightened out financially this year, you want to connect in this class. Of course, Adam and Nicole leading our high school, middle school students on Wednesday night in that ministry to connect there. And then this time, uh, Angel and Sonia, uh, they are leading together our ladies class for Wednesday nights. And listen, if you have been enjoying this Sunday morning series on faith, then ladies, you need to be in their class because they're talking about how to apply what we're talking about on Sunday morning in a practical way, about having vision for your life and how to see that come to pass. So ladies, you need to connect on Wednesday nights. If you've been moved by these messages, all you need to connect on Wednesday night with the ladies' class at 7 o'clock. And, uh, and while uh, Angel Dryden and Sonia Davis, uh, they're sisters, if you didn't know that, by the way, if you can't tell by looking. And so they're tag-teaming this thing together, and they're going to lead that. And so it's going to be a great a great host of classes. Again, that's, this is not all of them. These are just some. These are the ones that are here this morning for 9 o'clock or are not already out teaching a class in this morning session. And we're going to pray and ask the Lord to anoint them. And again, uh, if you're not signed up for one of these classes or one of the other classes, then you need to get connected to one. So whether you do it, uh, if you're watching us online, uh, you can sign up for the mobile app. Again, you can go to the website. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can do all the digital things or you can go to the table in the lobby. Somebody will be there after service to help you get signed up uh, on a good old-fashioned piece of paper, okay? And uh, we still take paper here. We still take cash, too, just in case you're wondering. Uh, you can you can dial online or you can give cash, but we'll we'll take it either way. All right, you can do it digitally. You can do it on paper, and uh, we want to we want to see. Um, I want to see a full slate of of classes where people are growing and their relationship with the Lord and their faith is growing and their relationship with other people is growing. What a great way to connect with other people as well in the household of faith. I'm going to ask this congregation to stand with me one more time. And would you just stretch your hands this way? We're going to pray over these that are up front, and then we'll have some we'll pray over the next service, and uh, we'll pray over all of our classes that are together today. Would you join with me as we just pray for a, a heavy anointing of God's presence? Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to serve your kingdom and to be part of a fellowship of faith, a community of faith. And Lord, we're praying today and believing today that, Lord, in this coming semester that you're going to pour out your presence powerfully and mightily in every one of these classes and groups as they gather together, whether here in this building or off-site or, or wherever they're gathering, Father. And whenever they gather, we pray that the presence of the Holy Spirit would anoint that time, that it's going to cause growth and increase to the life of every believer that connects that, Lord, their faith is going to grow, that their relationship with you is going to grow, that their, their, uh, their relationship with others are, is going to grow, that their gifts and talents is going to be developed so that they can be used for your glory and honor in a greater way. So, Father, I pray that you would remove obstacles, remove hindrances. God, I pray that you would bring people together. And as we come together around the centrality of your word, Father, you are going to do great and magnificent things. That, Lord, there are going to be seasons where people are going to get vision. There's going to be young people that are going to be challenged to grow. God, there are going to be people that are going to get out of debt. There's going to be people that learn how to lead their 
children in the way that you've called them to go. They're going to be people that grow in their knowledge of the Word of God and their faith is going to increase for greater things. They're children that are going to grow in, in their relationship with you, Father. They're people that are going to be saved in groups and classes this semester. We believe that, Lord. People will be saved. People are going to be called to ministry, empowered for kingdom service, God. And so, Lord, we pray for every one of these leaders, every leader that's in other service, they'll be in the other service. We pray for all these leaders today. And, Father, we ask that you anoint them mightily, use them greatly, and let these moments, these times, bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. You know, come on, give Jesus a praise this morning. Would you do that? And while they're heading back to their seats, would you let them know you appreciate their willingness to serve in the kingdom this year? All right, of course, we have our great kids classes, too, as well on Wednesday night for uh, all the way from our babies through elementary school. We've got classes for them as well. So some of those teachers, I think, are teaching this morning and will be here in later service. Well, uh, you don't want to miss jumping in this week. Again, make sure you stop by the table on your way out or check out that catalog or the, uh, the website or the app and get connected to a group or a class and, uh, you know, again, if you forget to sign up, show up. But if you can, please sign up. It helps us be prepared and be ready. And if you think, well, maybe, maybe not. Listen, if you're on the fence about whether or not you should sign up, then let me help you. Just sign up, okay? Just sign up. I promise you, if you'll sign up and go, listen to me, I promise you, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. All right? Well, we're in a series continuing talking about expecting, and we're learning how to develop faith that delivers. And this is an important series because faith is necessary to follow Jesus. You can't be a Christian without faith. It takes faith to be saved. And so you have faith to be saved. You have faith to follow Jesus. The Bible says you cannot please God without faith, and everything you receive from God, you receive by faith. So nothing is more important than using your faith. And the reason many people are living unsatisfied in their life is that they know they were meant for more, but they settle for less because they have unused faith, and it is the source of great frustration in their life. Now, we've said that faith is one of those difficult things to grasp because faith deals with the unseen. We can't see it. We can't put our hands on it. And so in this series, we're using this analogy to talk about faith like parents who are expecting a child. And when a couple are expecting a child, they start to live differently. I was thinking, listen, when we put our faith in Jesus, we start to live differently, don't we? And so when a couple are expecting a child, they start to live differently. And we've been looking each week at lessons from Scripture about people who are expecting a child and drawing some faith lessons from those. And so as we've looked at those, we, we've talked about different areas, but, but the, the session I want to talk about today, the message today, is a message that is essential in order to help reach your dream. And let me just warn you, it is an area that often can be overlooked or ignored. It's an easy one for us to push to the side, so you don't want to miss this today because this is so important to developing growing and using our faith. Listen, your faith is like a tool. Unless you use it, it doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't fix anything. Okay, so what is that key that we're talking about today? Here's the key. You can tell what someone is expecting by what they are saying. You can tell what they're expecting by what they are saying. Have you ever noticed that, that when a couple are expecting a child, the moment they learn they're expecting a child, the conversation shifts? When Stephanie and I discovered that, that, uh, that we were going to have a, a baby those years ago before Abigail came along, our conversations began to change. Not only did our conversations change, the conversations we had with other people changed. Everybody wanted to talk about the baby. How you doing? How you feeling? What do you think? What are you going to name it? Is it a boy? I mean, right? Every, when you know somebody's expecting, it seems like all the conversations at some point turn back to the expectation of that child. And 
And so every conversation at some point turns back to the expectation or the expecting of a child. And so what I want you to see is that in order for us to receive the promises of God, then I have to align what I say with what I want to see. I have to get in line with what I want to see take place in my conversations. Let me give you a verse in the Bible that's a pretty popular verse that talks about what we say. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Look at this verse. He said, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. And so the writer here is reflecting on the fact that God created everything he made by speaking. God didn't like wave a magic wand and the world was created or wave his hand and the world was created. No, the Bible says he spoke and when he spoke, the earth was created. And so it was in that power of God's word. And the Bible says that you and I are made in the image of Almighty God. And as his imagers, the people made in his image, he has given us the ability to speak and come into agreement with his word. And when we speak the word of God, the word the word of God has the power to bring things into a being. Amen? His word is powerful, isn't it? And so when we agree with his word and speak his word, we can see things happen. You see, if words created the world, listen, they can also create your world. The world in which you want to live. And when it comes to your dreams and your destiny, what you speak has to come into alignment with what you want to live out. See, when God wants to see your faith, he watches your mouth. He's looking for your words. You know, there's two times in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it says that Jesus was amazed. And both times, when it says Jesus was amazed, it dealt with a, a display of faith through words. He was amazed by the words that people spoke. In fact, let me give you those two. In Matthew chapter 8, we read the story about a Roman centurion. We're not talking about a Jewish believer. We're not talking about someone who, who was raised in the faith and in the word of God. This is a Roman centurion. That's an officer in the Roman army, all right, a Gentile. And the Bible said that on one occasion, he had a servant who was paralyzed and sick, and he came to Jesus and said, I believe that you can heal my servant. And Jesus said, okay, I'll go to your house. But watch what the centurion says. He, he says, no, no, watch this, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. The centurion said, Lord, I don't deserve that you could come under my roof. No, don't come to my house. He's like some of us, like, no, don't come to the house. You know, if I call and tell my wife you're coming, she's going to be upset. It'll take a day for us to get ready to have company, all right? You know what I'm talking about. He said, no, no, don't come to my house. I'm not worthy. He said, watch this. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. And Jesus heard this. When he heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those following, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I, I haven't found anybody uh, amongst the believers with the faith that this Gentile, this Roman officer has. He, he said, I don't need you to come to my house, Jesus. I know there's power in your word. If you'll just say the word, my servant, who's a long way off, will be healed at the word that you speak. And Jesus said, I've not found anybody in all of Israel, of all the descendants of Abraham, with faith like this Roman has. And the Bible said Jesus was amazed. Here's the second time Jesus was amazed in Mark chapter 6. Jesus has gone to his hometown of Nazareth, and as he's teaching there, and oftentimes when he would go to a town, he would teach, and people would come, and they would seek him for miracles, and they would believe him for miracles, and Jesus would do wonders in many of the cities that he traveled in. But when he came to his own hometown, the people didn't get around and say, Lord, can you do a miracle? Can you do this? This is what the Bible said. They criticized Jesus, and they said things like this. We know him. He grew up here. How, what's so special about him? This is Mary and Joseph, the carpenter's son. I mean, he was, working on the, he was working on my dining room furniture just a few years ago. 
I mean, he built the fireplace in our house. I mean, who is he to think he can come and do miracles? And they criticized him, and they didn't believe that he could do that. They're like, he's nobody. He wasn't even the valedictorian in the class. I mean, there's what's so special about him. And watch what Jesus said in Mar- or said about Jesus, Mark chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And because of their unbelief, he could not do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. He was amazed at their unbelief. It said he could not. It didn't say he decided not to. It said he could not do the miracles he desired to do because of their unbelief. See, in both of these stories, Jesus identified their level of faith by what they said. So here's the question this morning. Based on what you say, is Jesus amazed at your unbelief or your faith? It, as he's listening to what you say, is Jesus amazed by your unbelief or is he amazed that you have great faith by what you say? You see, your words are either undoing your dreams or they're ushering in your dreams. They're either undoing them, because many of us, that's the missing link. We, we, we're really not speaking. We, 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 we know what we're expecting, and we've even reoriented our life in some ways. But we've yet to harness the power of words to declare the Word of God and let what we say align with the promises of God. And so we, we've got to align our words with what the promises of God say. We've got to let our words speak life into the marriage or into the business or into our sick bodies. We've got to let our words speak life into those situations. So it's either giving us hope or, or we're, we're talking negative. We're, we're saying things like, well, you know, I, I can never do that. I, I could never uh, run a business. I could never uh, finish that degree. I could never, uh, you know, see that happen in my family. And we have these negative ideas. So our words are either undoing our dreams or they're ushering in our dreams when we align our words with what the Word of God says. So this morning, I want to talk about in this particular message how to articulate your expectations. How do I let my words line up with what God wants to say? So, so we're talking about articulating our expectations. And we're looking again at the couple who's expecting in Luke chapter 1. And that is, we're going to talk about a man named Zechariah. Now, we mentioned them last week. We focused on Elizabeth. But this week, we want to talk about Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest. And uh, he'd been serving as a priest for a number of years. And he loved God. He was a faithful man. And he loved his wife, Elizabeth. She was the apple of his eye. But uh, as we talked about last week, uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were a wonderful couple, but something was missing in their life. They, they, they were missing a child. And so they, they've been praying for that. They've been believing for that. And so in this story, we find that they're going to see the realization of their dreams come to pass. The Bible says that one day, Zechariah was serving in the temple of the Lord, and he was burning incense. The priests would serve by a lottery system. When their time came up, they were called to serve. So he was on his time to serve in the temple, and he was there burning incense. And by the way, the burning of incense in the temple in the Old Testament is a picture, and the New Testament even here, is a picture of how our prayers go up before the Lord. So just like the smoke would rise up off the censer and it would go from from earth to heaven, so it's a picture of our prayers rising up to the Lord. And at this particular moment, when he's burning incense on that occasion, representing the prayers that rise up, an angel appears to him in the temple and the angel says to him, Zechariah, your prayers have been heard. Let me just say something this morning. Maybe you've been praying, maybe you've been believing for a long time and you feel like God has forgotten your prayers. Maybe you've even forgotten your prayers, but can I tell you that God never forgets a single faith-filled prayer that rises from heaven to earth to him, or from earth to heaven to him. It is every single prayer that you pray has been heard, and it has been held, and at the right time, and at the right moment, in the right way, God will answer your prayers when you've prayed and believe in faith. Amen. Aren't you grateful today? He hears your prayers. And so God's going to answer that prayer. I want you to look at the encounter Zechariah has with this angel. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. Look there. The Bible says this, But the angel said to him, 
Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. By the way, uh, that's John the Baptist we'll know him as later in the Scripture. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Now, uh, for most people, this would be amazing news, right? This would be incredible. An angel just came from heaven and said, you've been praying all these years, God has heard your prayer, and God is going to give you a son. But over the years, Zachariah's faith had shrunk. His faith had decreased, and it showed in what he said. Watch what he says, all right? His, his, his response reflects his lack of faith. Luke chapter 1, verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife is well along in years. Now, you know Zechariah loved his wife because he said, I'm an old man, but he noticed he said, She's just well along in years. And he's a good husband, isn't he? I mean, that's a good example of a good husband there. He knows how to say the right things on that moment. So I'm an old man. She's well along in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. And so Zechariah is like, Lord, you know, I hear you. I hear you, angel. I mean, we're talking about an angel come to visit and says it'll happen. And he still says, I don't know how it can happen. It's too late. It's over. And, and I, I don't think it'll happen. And, and this angel says, listen, I'm Gabriel. You imagine it's like the angel's like, what do you mean you don't believe me? I just came from heaven. I mean, if I had an angel show up and speak to me like that, I think I would, uh, that would lift my faith, right? But he says, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Gabriel. What do you mean? I just came from heaven with a word from God. But so you don't keep speaking negatively in the process. You're not going to say another word until it happens. And so Zechariah gets a great promise, but his words were about to wreck the promise. And so God shut his mouth so he wouldn't keep speaking negatively. See, this passage shows us that if we're going to receive the promise, there are a couple of things we need to do. Here's the first thing we need to do if we're going to receive the promise. We've got to stop describing the problem. Stop describing the problem. Have you ever noticed the, the crazy things that people will say to a pregnant woman sometimes? I mean, you know, think of the, the crazy things that, you know, you know you, people say, wow, you know, are you sure there's only one in there? You look, you're like, you look how big you are, you know. Or, you know, are you sure you're only four months pregnant? You look like you're about to pop, you know. The crazy things that people would say, you know. Are you sure you want to name them that? I mean, you sure about that name? I mean, you know, hey, here's just, just a little advice. Uh, just uh, something that I follow very firmly. I never even mention to a woman about being pregnant unless she brings it up first. I don't care if she's about to have triplets next week. I'm not saying a word about a pregnancy unless she brings it up, okay? Just a little advice for you right there. But ladies, hey, my heart goes out to you in those situations. You know, all the crazy things people say as if it wasn't already hard enough not to keep from killing somebody in those moments, right? <laughs> all those hormonal everything's going on. Okay, but when you're expecting, it's hard to hold your tongue, isn't it? Well, Zechariah was no different in this situation. I mean, he, he, it's hard for him not to speak out in this moment. But his first response is, how can, how can this be? I'm too old. I mean, Elizabeth, she's, she's too old. We, we tried this before. And with all that stacked against him, it was natural for him to first describe all the problems that he saw. See, it's easy to describe how, how that, well, I, you know, God, I don't, I don't have that kind of ability. Or God, I, you know, nobody in my family has ever had a good marriage. Or God, I, you know, this is what the doctor says about my situation. Or, you know, uh, my kids, they don't want anything to do with church. They, I can't even get them to, to talk to church. They won't even come with me on Easter, you know, or Mother's Day. And it's easy to describe all the problems and the reasons why we can't. But one of the greatest tests of your faith will be, can you stop saying what you see so God can change what you see? 
Stop just telling it and describing it in a way that speaks negative over it because your words have power. And as long as you speak negatively, you're empowering the negative circumstances in your life. I've never seen God make a situation better when you speak bad words over it. Criticism never improved anybody's marriage. Right? A negative attitude never helped you achieve anything in life, did it? Oh, I can't do that. That's not possible, right? And we all know, you know, the, the can't never could, could it, right? I mean, come on. Somebody read way back in the day the little engine that could, right? You've got to change the way you speak. Listen, as long as you're cursing it, God can't bless it. As long as you keep speaking negatively. And listen, you, you may be struggling in this area. And you may be saying, well, Pastor Jerry, listen, I have tried to get this under control. I have tried to change the way I talk. You know, you've tried to get it under control. You've tried to change your language. You know, I say, hey, I've even tried to quit saying some words that I know I shouldn't say. You know, maybe you've got, a, you've got a swear jar and you're like, we could go on vacation for all the money I put in the swear jar. I'm trying. And you say, I, I just, I'm struggling. I can't quite get it under control. Listen, I, I've got bad news for you. You will never be able to get it under control on your own. There's not a person here who can tame their tongue. Even professional speakers like politicians still say gaffes because they cannot control their tongue. But this is what the Bible says. Watch this, James 3 and 8. The Bible says this, No human beings can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Listen, no human can tame their tongue. But listen, the good news, God's not human. God's not human. Remember, the angel shuts Zechariah's mouth so that he will not keep speaking negatively. Zechariah didn't shut his own mouth. The angel said, it's a divine thing. You're not going to speak again. And here's the assignment. You've got to make the Holy Spirit the Lord of your lips every day so you can speak what he wants you to speak and not say what you don't need to say. You've got to invite him in. Look at this verse, Isaiah chapter 50 verse, and, and verse 4. It says, The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the words that sustain the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Every day we need to get up and say, Lord, I pray today you would give me a well-instructed tongue, help my words to line up with what your word says, and I pray that today I would have an ear to hear what you're saying, and then let me speak what you say, Lord. And listen, you've got to keep asking. You can't just pray it once. We've got to do this daily. I don't know about you, but I've got, to, I've got to watch what I say every day. And so every day, I've got to ask the Lord to help me. If I blow it today, then tomorrow I've got to get up again and say, Lord, I'm praying today you help me change what I say. And so the Holy Spirit can help us to have a well-instructed tongue. How many of you like to have a well-instructed tongue? So that what you say lines up with what the Word of God says. You see, when you, begin to, when you begin to speak right, you begin to let the Lord lead you and direct you, it can change the trajectory of your life. I read the story recently about a man named Richard Montanez. He had a pretty hard life growing up. He was the son of Mexican immigrants. He had a real difficult time uh, with English. They were very poor. And because of his challenges with English and, and their poverty, he dropped out of school before he graduated. And so he had a hard time finding a job in that era. And so finally, uh, he, he just kind of gave up on any dreams he had. And he took a job, uh, was able to get a job as a janitor at a local Frito-Lay factory. And so he's working there, and it would have been easy for him just to describe his problems and be negative, but he threw himself into his job. He tried to do the best that he could do. He didn't talk about all of his problems in life, but committed himself. He was a believer, and he committed himself to doing the very best he could do every day. And while he was at work, he would try to uh, pay attention and, and observe everything else that went on and see everything that was happening. Maybe he could learn another job by watching some of the other jobs and move up in the ranks. And so he really gave his best and, uh, and, and did it all. But one day he realized that the company was missing something that he'd always enjoyed. It was, he, he was missing something from his own culture and the cuisine that he grew up with. And, and he'd actually taken some, some leftover products home and, and worked some different things until the day came and the opportunity came when on one occasion 
uh, the, uh, one of the executives was walking through the floor in the plant one day while he was at work, and he thought, this is my chance. And Richard approached him, and, and, and with, the, with, the, with the Lord's help, he gave him a great, flawless sales pitch about a product he thought would be great for their company. In fact, when he, when he was speaking it out, it was just like he, he'd rehearsed it. It was just like the Lord was instructing his tongue along the way to, to make that perfect. Well, the executive was so impressed by Richard's presentation and what he had to say, they bought into the idea and developed the product, which became Flaming Hot Cheetos, one of the best sellers for the Frito-Lay brand. Richard is now a vice president with the Frito-Lay company and a very, very sought-after public speaker and motivational speaker and believer who travels the country. In fact, they're actually working on a movie about his life story. Listen, if the Lord leads you and directs you, your words can change the course of your life when they line up with what God said and you give it your best and you give it your all. Aren't you glad we serve a God who can do the incredible? Amen? And so you've got to stop describing the problem. Sometimes all we can, and I'm not talking about denying reality. I'm going to touch on this at the end. But I'm talking about letting, uh, letting your words be more than just going around all the time saying how bad it is, how difficult it is, how, how there's no hope, there's no help. I mean, we've got to find a way to let our words match what the Word of God says. All right, so that's the second point then. We've got to start declaring your promise. Stop describing the problem. Start declaring your promise. It's not enough just to stop saying the wrong things. Maybe you, you've got it where you're stopped saying the wrong things. You've got to start saying the right things. Start declaring the promises of God in your life. Let me give you three steps on how to declare the promises of God in your life, okay? Uh, first of all, get comfortable talking to yourself. Get comfortable talking to yourself. You say, well, Pastor Jerry, that, people might think I'm crazy. You know, well, hey, you know, uh, sometimes faith will make you do things that seem a little crazy to people without faith, won't it? But you've got to get comfortable talking to yourself. Reminds me of the story of the uh, father who was, uh, who was with his out-of-control two-year-old walking through the grocery store, and this kid's throwing a fit and screaming and yelling, and he's just, the father's just pushing the buggy along, and he's just saying, It's okay, Danny. You can do this, Danny. We're almost done, Danny. Just hang in there, Danny. And, and this elderly lady saw him doing that and saw this kid screaming. She felt sorry for him, and she just walked over to the cart, and she said, you know, it looked like little Danny's having a bad day. And, and, and the man replied, said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He said, his name is Nathan. My name is Danny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the moral of the story is sometimes you've got to talk your way through some difficult stuff. You've got to talk yourself through it. When you feel like dying, you've got to start talking about living. When you feel like giving up, you've got to start talking about pressing on. When you don't see a way out, you've got to say, my God can make a way. And you've got to get, connect that. You've got to let your mouth begin to declare to yourself, we can do this by the grace of God. Me and God together. I can't do it, but me and God together, we can make it. Amen. Have you ever had to talk your way through some things? I've been in some situations. I had to keep telling myself, come on, just keep going. Keep going. I've been in moments where I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. I'd just say, we're just going to take the next step, Lord. I don't know what to do, but we'll get up tomorrow and face another day. We're going to do it. We can make it. See, it's easy to describe the negative. It's easy to describe the problem, but what you've got to do is start saying to yourself, we can make it. We can make it. By the help of God, by the grace of the Holy Spirit, we can make it. All right? So, so you've got to get comfortable talking to yourself. Secondly, get a promise from God. Get a promise from God. <clears throat> now, we, we've said this before. I've heard it said like this. You need to stop waiting for a voice and start looking for a verse. Stop waiting for a voice. Start looking for a verse. See, a promise from God is not like a promise from me. If I make you a promise, I'll do my best to do what I said I would do, but there are times I just can't deliver, right? I, I, I can't make it happen always. I, I've got uh, issues. There are circumstances I can't control, right? You ever told somebody, I'll be there on time, and then all of a sudden you get out there and there's a, you know, an accident and you, you can't make it. There are times, there are circumstances you can't control, so you can't deliver on what you said you'd do. Or, or hey, we all have some character flaws. Sometimes we say, well, I'll do this, and we just forget, right? I can't guarantee the outcomes always. Listen, but God doesn't have any of those issues. 
He doesn't have any of those problems. And if God said it, then he can deliver it. If he said it, sign, sealed, and it'll be delivered at the right time. Because God's word, listen, is accompanied by God's power. That's why we can count on his word. His word is accompanied by his power. Motivational speakers and positive thinking, they always fail. Why? Because they're based on willpower. You know, you get motivated, but it's all about your willpower. But when you believe God's word, his promise is not based on your willpower. It's based on his power and your willingness to follow him. Amen. Come on, give him praise for his power this morning. He's got great power. And so God's promise depends on God's word. That's why the scripture over and over affirms his word. Isaiah said that God's word will never return void. David said, this is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. King Solomon said, this would be a shield for your defense. Paul said, it is the breath of God to you. Peter said, this word would endure forever. Hebrews says that this is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can separate the sin out of your life. James said this is like a mirror and when you look into it it helps a reflection to see what you need to do and how you need to live and John said this is more than just something this is someone this is the living word of God Jesus to us aren't you glad for the word of God and the power of his word amen hey when you think on this you think on him Listen, when when you look into this you look at him when you depend on the word you're depending on God So get a promise. Get a promise. See, Zechariah learned that a word from God could do more in a moment than he could do in a lifetime. A word from God accomplished more than he could do in a lifetime. See, that's why the enemy wants to keep us from the word. That's why he wants to keep you from, from reading the word, memorizing the word, studying the word. He doesn't want you to know what's in here. Your enemy doesn't want you to know. That's why he, you know, you, you try to start out and you start on a reading plan and, you know, you, you know, hey, it's, what is it, January the 30th today? You know, you were going to read the Bible through in a year and now you're, you know, you're 28 days behind on your reading plan already, you know. Let me encourage you in something. If you'll just stay consistent, say, I was going to try to read, just try to read. Listen, I, when you're a Bible reading plan, great, do it. But if you get behind, just keep reading. Don't say, well, I just, I can't do it. I just quit. Just keep reading. Keep reading. I, yeah, I hear people say this. You know, I try to read the Bible, but I don't understand it. Let me, let me just say this. The more you read it, the more you understand it. If I picked up a, a, a 10th grade Algebra 2 book right now, I probably wouldn't understand it because I haven't looked at an Algebra 2 book since I was in the 10th grade. <laughs> okay? Hey, but if I started studying it, the more I studied it, the more I'd understand it, wouldn't I? And so if you want to know the word, study the word. The more you study it, the more you'll understand it. But the enemy wants to keep you from the word. He wants to make you think, well, you can't understand it. You can't grasp it. You might as well quit wasting your time reading it because he knows when you get the promises of God in your life, it'll change how you see the, how you see the circumstances around you. And when you begin to say what God's word says, his power is accompanying his word, and it'll begin to bring the revelation of that vision in your life. All right, here's the third thing, the last thing, and I'm closing in just a moment. you got to get in agreement with what God said. Get in agreement with what God said. Nine months after Zechariah's divine visitation, Elizabeth had their baby. And the Bible tells the story on this. It said that uh, after she um, had the baby on the eighth day, as was the custom of the Jewish people, they would take the baby and uh, they would then present the baby to the Lord and they would name the baby. That was the tradition. They would name the baby on the eighth day. And so they would always name the baby. Typically in that day, they would name the baby a family name. You know, like little Zachariah Jr. or something after a grandfather, a great-grandfather, whatever name had been in that family and their tribe. And so they, they take the baby on the eighth day. Remember, Zachariah can't speak. So they, they, they do all the things they would do is they present the baby to the Lord. And then they say, what is the baby's name? And Elizabeth said, his name is John. His name is John. Well, the priest, the other people around there, they said, well, well no, you can't name the baby John. Nobody in your family has a name John. That, that's not part of your family name. That, that's a break on tradition. And, and so there was a little controversy that started. You, you can't name him John. And, and the Bible says that they gave Zechariah something to write on 
and said, what is this baby's name? Your wife's trying to name him John, but that's not part of your family name. They don't, they don't go with your family. She's trying, to, she's trying to put her family name in maybe. Who knows? And, and so Zechariah took the tablet and he wrote down, his name is John. And the Bible said when he said, well, when he, when he did that, when he came into agreement with what the angel said and wrote it, John, the Bible said his mouth was open and he began to speak and began to praise the Lord. When he came into agreement, when he came into alignment with what the word said. Watch this. It's in Luke chapter 1, verse 63. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising the Lord. See, the moment you come into agreement with God, the moment he came into agreement, his mouth was open, and he began to praise the Lord. One of the most most important decisions you're going to make every day is either to agree with what you see or agree with what God says. What are you going to do when you wake up and you don't feel great? Are you going to say, well, you know, my my back hurts and just talk about that? Oh, listen, I know I'm not talking about denying reality. Or are you going to say, my back hurts, but I'm believing today that Jesus is a healer? Well, you're going to just look, well, the bank account's empty. Yeah, but my God's a provider. My God's a provider. Well, the kids, they're acting up again. They're all, who knows what they're up to. But I believe that the word planted in their heart's going to come forth. And they're going to not forget what they were taught. I'm not talking about denying reality. That's not faith. Denying reality is not faith. You know, just going around, you know, Saying, well, I, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, but you're coughing and hacking all over everybody with runny nose. I'm not talking about denying reality here. That's not faith. Faith is saying, this might be what it is, but I believe on a greater plane, my God's a healer. I might be sick, but I serve a healer today, so I speak life over my body. I speak healing over my body. I, I, might, not, I might be struggling financially, But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed out begging bread. I declare the word of God over this situation. It's believing and trusting God's word even when what you see doesn't look good. It's saying, Lord, I believe it today. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What if you got a verse and started getting up and declaring that verse over your life? What if you began to declare what you're believing for, even if you don't see it happening yet? This, um, this property that we have, uh, we bought it just, uh, I guess, actually I think this year is 20 years. 20 years that we bought this property. Maybe may been actually last December, maybe been 20 years we bought this property. We've been looking to relocate the church. Our old location was too small to grow and expand. <clears throat> so we're looking for a place. And I, I looked at every, I called about every piece of property. I, I called about all kind of, everything that was for sale or I thought might be for sale. We, I called about it. We were looking for a, a place to relocate to. And, and this property had been for sale at one point, but they had taken it off the market. It wasn't for sale. But I, I lived uh, just not far, a little you know, a few blocks away over here off this road. And so I would drive down this road and I just started noticing this property. And so I would always drive by this property, even if I didn't have to. I'd drive out of my way, drive by this property. And every time I'd drive by it, I would stick my hand out as I drove by and say, Lord, if it could be your will, Lord, let us have this property so we could build a church on it. So I, I don't know how many months I just, I just, say that. I don't even think I told anybody else. I said, Lord, if it's your will, I'm just believing that we're going to, that we're going to have this property. If it's your will, if this is the right place, God, I, I'm declaring we're going to get it. So I, we kept talking about it. I kept I'm praying about that. And eventually we sat down with our board one day and I said, hey, there's this one piece of property that I just, I'm just praying over and asking God about. If it's his will, I did keep declaring over it. And one of the guys said, well, let's just go ask him if they'll sell it. I said, okay. So we got a realtor to go approach the owner of this property and uh, he, he knew the lady that owned it. And he, he said, uh, you know, hey, there's a church that's interested in your property. That, and, you know, it's not for sale, but they're interested. And she said, you know, I'm building another. She doesn't live on the property. She said, I'm building a house right now. She said, I'll tell you what. Tell them to make me an offer on it. So we sat down and we said, well, we know it's worth 
probably more than we can afford, but let's just make the best offer we can make. The offer we made was almost a quarter of a million dollars less than the realtor said he would like to list it for if we didn't buy it. And so we made the offer, and she took it. And, and so we, moved, we bought the property, and, and, and it was a few years before we moved on it, but it was the Lord that worked it out. But listen, for a few months before we bought the property, I kept saying, Lord, if it's your will, I believe this is going to be the church's property. So we didn't own it yet, but I just kept declaring what I believed we wanted to see happen. Now, here's the key. I would say, Lord, if it's your will. Because when we come into agreement with the word of God, we've kind of come to agreement with the will of God. And so whatever it in your life that you're desiring to see, say, Lord, I'm just praying and believing. Lord, I just begin to declare it. Begin to speak it. So is what you believe coming out of your mouth? Does what you say line up with what you want to see? Would you stand with me this morning? Listen to me. For some of you, this is what you need to do. You need to, you need to go home and Maybe before you get home, you need to Google some scriptures on something you're praying for. If you're praying for your finances, go Google say scriptures on the Bible on money and start reading some of them. Listen, and it might be that one particular one the Lord speaks to you in. And then you need to grab a hold of that scripture and you just need to start praying that scripture. Or maybe you need to Google some scriptures on health or some scriptures on uh, you know, your family, scriptures on marriage. Scriptures on ministry, scriptures on calling. Maybe you get some scriptures on peace. Maybe you need to Google some scriptures on joy. Start speaking those things over your life. I'm, I'm going to pray this scripture. I'm going to pray through this scripture. And, and just begin to pray over those things. Just begin to declare those things. What the Word of God says. Begin to speak for Because as you begin to speak it, Listen, here's what happens. Here's what happens. When you begin to speak it, your faith will be lifted. So, well, Pastor Jerry, what if it doesn't happen? What if it does? It's in the hands of the Lord. Listen, I've never seen somebody operate in faith, let their faith be lifted, walk away disappointed. Because faith is about trusting God, and we put it in His hands. So would you bow your head with me this morning? Father, I thank you today that, God, you are a God who strengthens us. God, that where we're weak, you can be strong in us if we open our heart and allow your peace, your strength, your grace to minister through us. And, Lord, today we, we are all challenged at times by speaking what is, what is seen and negative words that don't line up in faith. God, it's easy for us to be negative. God, it's easy for us to see the problems and talk about the problems all the time. But God, I pray that when we see the problem, we would talk to you about it and begin to speak faith over it. That we wouldn't be caught up in a conversation that leads down a dead-end path, but Lord, our words would begin to produce life. That, God, we would begin to speak hope and we would speak joy and we would speak peace and we would speak in faith and we would speak the future according to your word. And so, Father, I thank you today that in all circumstances, no matter how desperate or dark they may be, there's always a word of hope because Jesus is our hope and strength. And I pray that, Lord, you would give us a word to hold on to, a verse to declare, that, God, we would begin to speak to ourselves, to you and to others, Lord, that we are believing, and we would speak and say what we're believing for. And we thank you today for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Maybe you're here watching, and, and maybe you're struggling in these areas, and 
you, you just say, Pastor Jerry, I, I've been so negative lately. Listen, it, it's just a struggle we all face at times. But listen, we've got we've to turn that negative conversation to a place of faith. Say, well, what if it doesn't happen? Listen, all you've got to say is, Lord, I'm believing you and I'm trusting you and I put it in your hands. According to your will, let it be done, Jesus. And then when you trust him, you know that he'll work all things according to your good and for his glory. I'm going to ask you to do this with me for a moment. I I just want us to encourage one another in faith today. So maybe if you'll just gather with the people you came with today or somebody nearby that you're comfortable praying with. And would you find somebody you can pray in agreement with today? And and this is what you, I just want you to speak life over them, speak faith in their life. Just just encourage them, say, Lord, I'm just speaking life today. I pray that their words line up with you. Come on, just begin to pray for them this morning. Father, I pray for every person here. I pray for every person watching us online right now that, Lord, their, their faith would rise up, that their words would line up with your word, that they would be encouraged today, that, Lord, they would be strengthened, that your presence, God, would speak life over them right now, Father, that, Lord, your grace would speak joy and peace into their circumstance, Father. I pray that, Lord, that, God, whatever they're facing, whatever their circumstance, whatever they see, that, God, they would look beyond what they see and they would see Jesus as Lord of their circumstance, They would see Jesus high and lifted up. That, Lord, your glory would reign over their circumstance. That your power would reign over their need. That, God, they would speak your word and in your word. That they would see power unfold. And that, God, their faith would increase. Their faith would rise up. God, as they speak it and declare it, God, they are going to see your presence prevail in their situation. Giving life and healing and peace and hope and joy and strength that you are going to be more than enough in every single circumstance in their life today, God. We believe today. We believe today. Lord, we believe it today, Father. We thank you right now that, God, you are more than enough, that, Jesus, your grace is more than enough, your strength is more than enough, God, that you are all sufficient in every circumstance. And so today, Lord, we declare what your word says in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him this morning. He's worthy today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to sing, you said it, I believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship him for a moment. We declare it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just sing this for a moment with him. You said it, I believe it. We believe today, God, your word, whatever your word says. Come on. Just line up with him this morning. You, you said. said Thank you, Lord. It is the yes, Lord. You, you said, said. Yes, Lord. I believe. You said. It is done. You said. I believe. Yes, Lord. You said. Father, we declare today that, God, your word is true. Let God be true and every man be a liar. God, your word is true. And today we confess and declare that we believe the word of God. 
And Lord, we're standing on the word and we're going to speak the word until we see every promise fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, come on, if you believe it today, give him praise in the house. Watching online, give him praise today. Amen. Well, I pray that when you leave today, your conversation, what you speak this week, lines up with what you're believing God for in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for worshiping with us here at River Life this morning. Listen, on your way out, stop by the table, check out the opportunity to sign up for groups and classes or do it on your app or online. Watching us online this morning, go to your mobile app or online, sign up for a group or class. We uh, trust that you'll be connecting with us. We'll be broadcasting the uh, Wednesday Sanctuary class as well. So connect with us. We'd love to have you join us. God bless you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day. Hey, thank you for joining us for worship today here at River Life Church Online. We pray you are blessed by the, by the worship, by the message, and that your faith just increases and continues to grow. I will remind you that this coming week we start our spring semester of equipped classes and groups. You can check those out on our website or through the mobile app. You can also sign up for a group or a class there. Join us also this coming Wednesday, February the 2nd, we'll begin our first of the Wednesday night classes. We'll be live streaming those at seven o'clock for our class on the Book of Acts. You can join that one online as well. So we hope you'll connect with us this week. We hope you have a wonderful Lord's Day in Jesus' name. Thank you, we look forward to connecting again soon.